Hi everybody, I'm Mark Vins, and welcome to a special edition of Blue Wilderness. So far on this series, we've encountered some pretty incredible marine animals, but nothing has sparked our imaginations like sharks. And man, have we seen sharks. Near the Bahamas, we swam next to a great hammerhead. We got up close with some massive tiger sharks. Huh, that was a little too close. And who can forget that slumbering lemon shark that I was actually able to pet. These were some of the most eye-opening experiences of my entire life and have most certainly changed the way that I think about sharks. As we all know by now, they are certainly not the brutal killers that movies portray them to be. They are ancient, graceful, and often curious creatures that play a tremendously important role in our ocean ecosystems. But no matter how close we get, or how crazy the footage is, we always get these two questions. One, Mark, aren't you afraid you're going to get eaten? And two, what in the world are those little fish stuck to the sides of the sharks? To answer the first question, no, I'm not afraid of being eaten, guys. But that doesn't mean we don't have to be cautious. We are extremely careful around these apex predators. But truly, they aren't interested in eating us at all. And to answer the second question, those little creatures are called remoras. And like the shark, their role in the undersea world is a little more complicated than it may seem. We've encountered remoras almost everywhere we've been. Sometimes referred to as the sucker fish, these amazing animals' front dorsal fins have evolved over millions of years into an organ that acts like a suction cup. And with this suction cup, they can sneak up underneath a shark and very carefully hitch a ride. But it doesn't just piggyback on sharks. The remora will latch onto a wide variety of large marine animals, including rays, whales, larger fish, and even sea turtles. So you might be asking yourself, what gives? Why do they do that? Are they just lazy? Not at all. In fact, many believe that their interaction with their host is actually a well-adapted strategy that creates a mutualistic relationship. Mutualism is a type of symbiotic relationship in which two different biological organisms both benefit from each other. In other words, the shark and the remora are both positively affected by this little arrangement. While the shark will give the remora a ride and easy access to food, the remora in turn feeds off the scraps and parasites found on and around the shark, keeping it both clean and healthy. Now that's not to say that sharks and other large marine animals always love having a bunch of sucker fish attached to them. You can imagine the enormous drag created by all those fish along for the ride. This relationship between the remora and other larger marine animals has evolved over millions of years. And seeing those fish swimming along with these massive sharks reminds me of the interdependence of all things in the marine ecosystem. Our oceans consist of an enormous and delicate web of life. Every species depends in some way on every species, whether it's for food or just a good old fashioned parasitic cleaning. We've seen a lot so far in Blue Wilderness, but in truth, we've only just begun to scratch the surface. It is estimated that only 5% of our world's oceans have actually been mapped and explored. So it sounds to me like we've got a whole lot of adventures ahead of us, and I can't wait. Until next time, I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild, and we'll see you on the next dive. If you enjoyed learning about the remora, make sure to go back and watch the time that we got up close with some giant tiger sharks. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next Blue Wilderness Adventure.